Hello and welcome to Tuesday Night Talk. Good evening to all. Uh, I am Vinod Mungalpara. I'm one of the meditation teacher, Raj Yoga meditation teacher. I'm filling in for Sister Elizabeth. This event is hosted by Anubhuti Retreat Center, which is a part of uh, Brahma Kumaris, the World Spiritual Organization. And uh, our speaker tonight is uh, Sister Nina Sahastrabuddhe. Uh, she is a scientist for the Environmental Protection Agency and a uh, Rajyo meditation teacher for over 21 years. Sister Nina is going to talk about how to improve the self-respect, the self-esteem. And uh, this is a great uh, subject to learn because to keep the self-esteem in balance is the key how we interact with others, how we feel, how we succeed. Um, she's going to tell us how, what are the causes why we don't have balanced uh, self-esteem, uh, how we can increase our self esteem or keep in balance because I know that if uh, if I have a very high self-esteem of myself it's more like an ego arrogance you don't want a superiority complex or inferiority complex a balanced uh, self-esteem is needed and so how to be more assertive without being forceful and with effectiveness. So how we can be effective in our communication, in our work. So without taking much time, I will uh, let Sister Nina uh, tell us how we can learn this. Welcome. Thank you, Brother Vinod. And uh, good evening, everybody. And welcome to the session of improving your self-esteem. Improve your self-esteem. We know um, lots, there may be many definitions for self-esteem, but according to me that I know is, you know, self-esteem is how we value and how do we see ourselves. And it's usually based on opinions and beliefs. So it could be my own opinion, or it could be somebody else's opinion about me, which I believe. And then I create a, a picture of my own self. And I see it either through my own eyes, or I see it through somebody else's eyes, because I get a perception of what I am seeing or somebody else is seeing. And then I create this self picture. And then I start valuing myself based on that picture. Sometimes it could be nice and sometimes it's not that nice. You know, we all have different individuals and each person has their own way of perceiving things, have own value, uh, own opinions, and our own beliefs. And we start looking at ourselves in that way. So to me, that's what is self-esteem. Sometimes, as I said, it could be not so good. And there could be some reasons why it's not that good or we sometimes call it as low self-esteem. So we sometimes give a topic, what can be the cause of this low self-esteem? And if we look out over there, these are some of the things you and I know, and we have read it, we have experienced it. Uh, as children or as grown-ups, you know, wherever we are, whatever our situation is, so I just took this example of childhood, you know, for a child. Sometimes 
a child experiences in their childhood, there are many occasions. Sometimes they try to fit in a school. And they try to be like somebody else. And they try to fit in there so that I'm one of the community. And sometimes those experiences may or may not be that good. Sometimes there could be difficulty for children to meet the expectations and expectations could vary. Is it at home, what my parents expect of me? Probably I hear it over and over and over again that I have to get good grades, uh, I have to behave this way, I have to have these manners or whatever, you know, for a child. It could be a little little thing as not watching a television or watching it at a different time. So uh, the child has some expectation and then he has to meet some somebody else's expectation. And usually it's at home. There are parents, siblings, whatever. And when you have siblings, sometimes um, if there is a competition at home, and somebody else is doing better than you, then you feel neglected. Or it could be at school, you know, somebody is doing better in school and you feel neglected. So those are some of the causes, you know, that make you feel you're not good enough. And that you see as a child, you see, you perceive that and then you feel, oh, I'm not that good. So I start looking down at my own self. So looking lower than what I am and actually it may not be so. So that is low self-esteem, right? I mean, you and I, and I'm going to open up this for discussion and feel free to, I mean, this is still open, feel free to uh, chime in and you know, express your opinion whenever you feel like. Um, I don't have to be just one person speaking. We all can share and uh, discuss this. You know, it's just like any a chit chat, you know, in a room. So feel free um, to express your opinions and share. I welcome that. And the last bullet point that I show is abused. That's a really... Um, sad um, a part of this whole thing sometimes when you're already not looking up to yourself somebody is going to take an undue advantage and anybody who takes that advantage um, is a bully as we all know usually it's in a school you know or it could be somebody at home too you know um, and you're abused, um, and that is a really bad one. That definitely takes a very long time, um, especially in children, uh, to recover because those scars are deep. They are really deep, and and this low self-esteem can, for a child, it can go on for long, through adolescence, through adulthood. And it takes a very, very long time to get out of it. And it depends on every individual. Um, because we, we as individuals differ. And some people can recover much better than others and can come out of it. But some people take longer. So these are some of the low self-esteem reasons. And it may not happen at um, just school. It could be anywhere. Now, you, uh, children go to different places, you know, to learn different uh, in sports. Um, and maybe, you know, Boy Scouts. We have, we have heard lots of examples. And sometimes parents um, involve children in a lot of activities and don't have enough time uh, to be with them and then children are left by themselves and uh, if uh, a child is sensitive and comes across some experiences that are not good it adds to this the low self-esteem 
So what happens in low self-esteem? And I'm going to show you this picture. And I know this is of a girl, uh, an adolescent girl. But the posture, you know, she's is not comfortable at all. Because, and she's not even looking at herself in the mirror. So doesn't even feel like looking at herself. It's that, that much, you know? So every individual who is at lowest self-esteem, we know that their body language differs. They don't feel good about anything. They're sitting in one corner, not doing anything. Um, and trying to be away from people. So these are some of the things that we see in some children, you know, who are uh, having hard time in school or hard time anywhere uh, at sports maybe. And when they are in this situation, obviously they are not doing well because they don't see themselves as good enough, right? And it affects every activity that they do. Even their simplest thing, there's no smile. There is no enthusiasm. There is no energy. It, they just want to shy, they shy away from everything. Sometimes they don't even come out uh, and mix up with the family or friends. They just They just want to be by themselves because all the time they perceive themselves is not good enough and even adults you know taking the example of adults and I'm, I'm going to go to the next slide for us adults too we go through a low self-esteem and some of the reasons that I've given here there could be many more not these they could be stressful life events you know losing somebody you loved or you depended all your life on you know losing that person cannot take that easily and you go into that stage for a long time because you depend on that person uh, or it could be a serious illness you're not able to do things that you could do in the past and so not good enough right I can't do what I could do sometimes there could be unhappy relationships this constant stress, constant disagreement. It's not a healthy, a healthy situation anywhere, right? I mean, even at work, if you go to work and you have a boss who's constantly nagging you, you know, or finding faults, even when you have done your best, so it creates a very, very unhealthy situation, circumstances, and it makes you feel you're not good enough, right? Even for adults. And we go into that stage of low self-esteem. And it's very easy to spiral down, isn't it? And once you're on a slope, you go down the slope quickly, don't we? So it leads to negative core beliefs about ourselves. Suddenly you start going deeper and deeper into negativity. And we all know there's so much of this around us these days. It's easy. It's easy to go into negativity because it's like a slope, you know. And once you have those negative core beliefs, then it's it, you're just surrounded by it. It's really for, it depends on the individual, how much effort do they put in there, you know, to um, come out of it. And the deeper you go, the harder it is to get out, isn't it? So these are just some of the examples I gave, you know, that I know. And they could, it could be really detrimental to lots of people. You probably don't do for people who are in jobs that are not very supportive, not very uh, healthy relationship. Uh, you become a different personality from what you were. 
Now that's a really hard one. It's like that abused thing that we spoke about, you know, in this slide, that last part where that's really hard. So even when you become an adult and um, you are um, in that really bad situation where you have, you're changing your personality due to this low self-esteem, you're constantly perceiving yourself as, uh, now I cannot do this. I'm not able to, now the sentence is, I'm not good enough to, I'm not able to do it. Then you go to a sentence, oh, I can't do it anyway. You do a negative self-talk constantly to yourself. And now you're way deep into the hole, right? So it's really hard when you're way deep in there to come out and bring up yourself, right? So really, um, this bad picture of low self-esteem. So at this stage, I just want to stop and pause for a minute and, um, you know, think of a moment, you know, where you felt like this and just ask yourself, you know, we all have gone through. It's not just me and you. <laughs> all of us here have gone through one point or the other and there could be many causes for it. Maybe change of place, you know, a new place or maybe a some really situation in our life and um, how did we or what what efforts are we taking or did we take in the past to come out of this you know so give it a thought because this this topic is not just uh, I talking continuously <laughs> so if you can uh, uh, give it a thought a moment and think of a time uh, when I know it's not very healthy, but how did you come out of it? You know, what did you do? So I just want to listen to somebody else if you want to share, if you are comfortable sharing. If you're not, that's fine too. But if you can, I would love to hear from you. I'm going to unmute everyone just for that. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. Okay, now you're all, you all can unmute if you have to speak. If you prefer to uh, chat, that's fine too. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. I know it's it's not really easy to share when you had those lower moments, but it's very nice to know if you had used any any methods and I, that's where I was going. So um, what do I do? What do I do when I am at that point, you know? And uh, uh, usually we know that it takes an effort. There may be uh, people who may tell me a lot of things, you know. I, maybe I have a really good friend. Maybe I have a great community who is helping me. But I, I, this person, has to work hard to come out of it. And for that, I have to feel, I have to feel that I should get out of it, so. I want to improve. I don't want to be in this stage. It should come from my inner being to, to um, cross the stage. So how can I do that? How do I develop? First, you recognize, right? Our first step was that, yeah, we recognize. We, we feel like that or a child feels like that or an adult feels like that. Now, when I see we, it's not just our group. I'm talking about a general we. So um, if we want to develop we as human beings, as adults or for our children or somebody we know, we want to help them. We want to develop the self-esteem. We see that they are perceiving themselves in a different way. And we want to help them. Now, what do we do? 
So we encourage, right? Uh, if if it is somebody else, not ourselves, then we give them a talk, right? But <laughs> it can go only so far, right? Okay, I listen and then I've, I go down again into my uh, comfort zone, which is really not a really comfort zone. It's, it's a place where I feel comfortable, which is again, the same box. And to come out of it, I start looking outside. And I try to look at small things. It's always said, right? To take baby steps, small steps at a time. So I start looking at small things that I achieve, right? And I celebrate them. I mean, it could be a simple thing. Like I did some good deed of just handing over a fallen pencil or a pen to somebody who could not pick it up and I pick it up for them. I feel good. And that person says, thank you and gives me a smile. So a smile, you know, and I smile back. Now I've celebrated that moment, haven't I? Just a simple thing. So I take really baby steps in Celebrate those small things, a smile. As soon as I take that first small step, the next step is definitely going and helping somebody. You know, I like it, right? It makes me feel good. So I start helping others, right? Somebody who needs a hand. Uh, somebody who is carrying some heavy stuff and or has too many things in their hands I say do you want help can I help you carry that another small step you know so we start helping right in, uh, in on a large scale we start volunteering right um, give help weekends um, to a community that needs help, you know, um, a, 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 a school, you know, maybe a substitute to help the teacher. She's overwhelmed with so many students. You go as a parent help or whatever, you know, you just want to help and help those children. You are now among uh, some community, a group, which makes you feel belong to them because they need you, you feel wanted, and then they work with you. So you've chosen a company that smiles with you, right? Because now you've helped them, you're with that company, you have made them feel good, they smile with you, right? So now you've, you are now in a group that makes you feel that you are wanted, you are worth something. I am good enough for this community, right? And then I continue that next steps. I'm going in baby steps, one step at a time. And then now I take a little bigger steps, right? I join new groups, new activities. And I've added there as an exercise, right? Now, what am I doing? I'm not only exercising when I, let's say, I mean, exercise, exercise. Yeah, you can go to a gym <laughs> with good friends. Uh, sure, sure enough. We know that changes the hormonal, uh, moves the stress hormone in a different way. And Brother Vinod can correct me here with all those things. Uh, definitely, you know, our inner uh, anatomy changes. But what I mean here is an exercise, a routine, which we do at a periodic level repeatedly. Keep repeating those, those events, those activities. Um, trying to do new things every time. Joining a new activity. Let's say I'm doing something for seven days. Great, I feel good. I, now I can do something. 
Let me join next month for another group activity. Now I've met uh, 10 more people like the previous group. And now I've got a group of 20 people who smiles with me because I belong to two different groups that are like me. And let's say I do that every Saturday with one group and then I go to another group, let's say on a Thursday or something. So now I've got two days in a week and I'm doing two different activities and now I'm developing my self-esteem slowly but steadily, right? So I just gave these few examples. There's lots out there, you know, there may be many more. But these are some of the things I used. Definitely, I have been in that place. I did lose my most loved person and I was a mom. And I didn't feel like doing anything at a time. And uh, I had to bring out myself, not for me alone, but even for my son. So I had to get out of it. And uh, I did these things. I really, I, I did these things. I celebrated small things when my son won in his tennis club. Oh, we just went to McDonald's <laughs> because he loved to play there. Uh, I chose a company with other parents who would come for the tennis and I started going with them to help in a volunteer group. I joined new groups and I joined Brahma Kumaris. I found people just like me. So um, these, these are my examples. I did these. So I just gave you my example. And um, I was, I really, uh, when I came to Brahma Kumaris, I was smiling all the time. I was smiling and people who saw me were like, oh my God, she's changed. So this has happened to me. And I was really happy because I found people like me. I found a reason I, I could um, see the same way as all others around me saw. And that was a big change for me. So with that, um, I really want to put this picture up and take a moment and once again, open it up to you if you want to share. And then I'll have a short meditation with all of you. Uh, but first, let's open up. If you want to chat uh, how you came out and what did you use? Maybe you use similar things that I used or it could be something else. So um, please feel free to share um, or um, just um, chat if you would like to. This is Donica. Uh -huh. I found being in nature with friends really helps me. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. I love nature too. <laughs> yes, I totally agree with you. Uh, just taking a walk uh, in a nature, a stroll. Oh, definitely. La nature always heals us. I totally agree with you. Thank you so much for sharing. Wonderful. Anybody else? Okay, that's fine. Um, let's sit back and relax and uh, do a few minutes of meditation. As I sit back, and relax. I go into that moment where I was stressed, where I may be stressed. And my mind is racing through thoughts numerous thoughts.
that I stop and pause. And go within and think, where am I going with these thoughts? Am I following a slope that just takes me deeper and deeper into these thoughts? How can I slow down? I pause again. And think of a moment that calms me. It could be the nature, the rising sun, the soft breeze, that calms me and pulls me or it could be a memory of a moment that made me smile I try my best to remain in that moment. And I realize my thoughts have slowed down. I feel calm. relaxed by the being like these moments and realize that these help me slow down. And take me into a place that makes me feel good. I feel energetic, happy. and want to continue. I am slowly making myself better. I can go to a place that makes me more comfortable 
more calm. And it just feels right. And it's okay. I remain in that stage for some more time. And keep practicing it for a few hours, my time. Thank you for sharing those moments with me. Do you have any questions, any comments, anything that you want to share? Please feel free to share how you felt or how you have used this technique before or in what circumstances. And did it help you? How did it help you? Okay, I assume that you want to remain in that calm, <laughs> soft place, comfortable place. Okay, I'll move on to the next slide. So there are ways in which we can we have developed our self-esteem and then we go on to increase it right now we know a way that we can get out of that low esteem or we can help somebody get out of the low esteem and develop that self-esteem develop that perception of ourselves um so how do i keep going right uh, I have to increase it, right? Because it's easy to slip down uh, when we are more towards negative side and everything is mostly negative around us. We tend to fall into that place again, right? So to stop that from happening, we want to increase the self-esteem. So some of the things that we can use, these are just my examples, but Feel free to share if you have used some good ones or if you know of something or if you've read somewhere. Um, we need to know ourselves. Who am I? Why do I need to take care of myself? Where am I going? What's my goal? So the more and more you think about, you know, we are all selfish beings even though we say and I keep repeating the sentence I think I've said this many times in some of my talks here and even outside even though we say oh no I do it for everybody uh, I know I share I care I I do all these things but at the bottom of everything of all that we do we do it for ourselves we are selfish beings so we do it because we feel happy. In, at the end of the day, we want to feel good. We want to be happy. So we, we want to do something for ourselves. So at that point, we need to know what or who am I and what do I want? In, and sometimes people use this word self-care. So actually caring for self, right? But how would you care unless you know, right? Everything you have to know, you have to know the path, right? Then you can tread that path. 
So it's the same here. You need to know what you want. And again, baby steps, small steps. Who am I, right? If I have... If at some stage I did feel low for one reason or the other, uh, if you have still done something good, even when you were at your lowest point, you did have a value, which meant a lot to you, which was important for you. And there are lots of values. We all know, but I'm just giving a few over here. Uh, kindness. You know, you're being kind, even in your worst moment. If you had seen somebody fallen down on the road, I am sure, sure, sure. We don't just walk past that person. We definitely lend a hand and say, at least help them with something that's fallen down and help them to pick it up. There we go. We have that kindness, right? It may be compassionate feeling, caring for others, right? If they had <laughs> money fall off from whatever their bag or whatever, we have returned that money. We do have that honesty, don't we? And if I have moved one step back just to help them, I did have that courage, didn't I, to help them. Nobody else did it. I took the, I took the first initiative. Maybe they have fallen down in a path that was really not a very simple path, maybe a slope. I, I had the courage to slope, go down the slope and help them, right? So I do have these qualities. So when I look at myself, what sort of values do I have? And I've used them even when I'm not feeling as good enough. But if I have used them, that's my spark, you know, that's the light in me that has kept me going. So now I know, right, who am I? I'm this individual, this being who have these values. I have this, even if it is just one value, kindness. Let, let me not have all these four if I just have kindness. And I did. I did bend down, I helped somebody pick up something, I helped them stand up on their feet. I do have that quality. And if I've done it, even in my worst moment, you know, really, really feeling not so good. But then I see this child fallen on the road, you know, he's running to whatever and he's fallen down and I run and pick it up. There I am. That's that's the quality or that that's the thing that I have in me that I look at me, you know, I start looking and knowing myself, oh, I have this. So if I have this, I definitely have at least, at least this quality, right? One quality, one value that I, which is really important for me, which makes me good, do something good. I am good enough. If I keep repeating the same thing um, the next day, or maybe the next moment, who knows, right? You might see something around the corner and you have now done another good act, haven't we? No, and there I am. I am using each step to improve myself, increase this self-esteem, meaning now I look at myself, I perceive myself, as someone who has this, this speciality. And I do have it. Oh, it may be in other people. But at this moment, what am I doing? Knowing myself. Self-care, right? Me. Me is who is important to me, right? So I'm looking at myself. And I know I have this. And I use this, right? And I've used it even in the worst time. So definitely, as I keep increasing or using this um, value, I look at myself, I know I have it, I know I'm good enough, and I keep using it. It's the more you use what you have, the more you share it, right? And the more it improves, the more you get in return, right? So that's how you start increasing your self-esteem. 
that's what I think. This is just my opinion that I think the more we uh, use it, um, I feel good, right? At the end of the day, I'm feeling good. I'm, I feel good about myself. I feel happy. So next time I do it, right? Because I'm so selfish. I really want to feel good. I want to feel happy. So I will keep doing it. And I do it. So that's one way that we can help our own selves. Let us be not selfish in the external way, but for my own self, right? And being selfish for me so that I feel good, so I can do good because it makes me feel good. So that's the way I'm looking at it. Um, so th these are. this is something that, um, you know, just an example of what I uh, do. So of course, now I look, you know, do I love myself? So here I have, love yourself, right? Yeah, I see. Hi, Manisha, go ahead. Um, yeah, hi, I wanted to share that what you just said is very true. And I was not doing that. And I started doing it and I feel good. Uh, I was attending one seminar and that's where they said, self-care is not selfish. <laughs> and since that day, I made that mantra, you know, like I'm going to take care of myself. <laughs> and it is really, uh, yeah, made difference. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Absolutely. You know, yeah. if you take care of yourself, you can take care of others. That is so true. The more you take care of yourself, you are ready to take yeah, care. Yeah, exactly. Of I was always putting myself at the, you know, last, right? Taking care of other things first. And, uh, and since I listened to that and I was, I started applying, it's like, yeah, I will take care of my family better if I'm feeling better. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely true. You know, uh, we, at least I am a mother. So uh, I used to, you know, not eat till my son came from school. And I would think, oh, okay, but sometimes I used to really be so hungry. And if he would make some mistake, you know, um, I would really get angry so quickly. But <laughs> <laughs> but the day I realized, oh, I'm unnecessarily getting angry at him. I realized, oh, I should eat my food. I should be happy. So no matter what he does, I can explain him, you know, and then so just simple thing, you know. Um, yeah, if we take care of ourselves, we can take care of them. And uh, perfect. Thank you so much for sharing again. So here is the slide, you know, love yourself. Um, yeah, take care of yourself. And uh once you start taking care of yourself, uh, you know more about you and you try to develop yourself. You start becoming uh, the person you would love to be, you know. So you change your personality. Now you are moving 180 degrees from what you were. You were a different personality because somebody made you feel like that. But now if you work hard, to, yeah, hi, go ahead. Yeah, please share. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I don't Om see Shanti. your name. Uh, who's raised the hand? Uh, this is Mona. To... Sorry? This is Mona. Oh, hi, Mona. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Um, yeah, you said that uh, when kids do something, we get quickly mad at them, right? <laughs> How many times uh, we tell them they don't listen. And at once, one point in time, we get so mad. So at that time, I question myself, am I really following Baba? <laughs> I sincerely meditate. I, I do all I can. But 10th time or the 15th time, definitely, you know, I lose my temper. So what am I missing here? And how to uh, be calm, even if things are not going in the way it is supposed to be, what should I do? Is that a question? 
Yes, yes, okay. it is a question. Can you please okay. help me out as since you said that <laughs> you know you are a mother and you have you would have uh, seen similar situation in your life as well. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be sharing your experience would be helpful. Sure. I mean, I'm not a perfect mother. <laughs> we all go through <laughs> our own ways, you know, and we learn. Uh, but it's very nice for the people who are not yet with us in Brahma Kumaris. We all in Brahma Kumaris follow a, a, a process where, uh, you know, we have faith. We have faith in the Supreme Soul. And we believe we are souls. So I know I wanted to give this meditation a little later, but that's fine. Um, I, I can go on now. Um, and definitely this has helped me to understand who I am, uh, what my qualities are. To answer your question, um, yes. As a mother, um, when they are really, you know, <laughs> they test us don't they uh, our children are our best test uh, when we uh, when they really uh, are creating for me uh, I just have one son but oh he had lots of friends coming over and I, I was a mother of five six children at one time uh, so they do test us um, and at that moment for me what techniques I had used is again you know I learned it a hard way that uh, I should take care of myself. So first thing, you know, uh, uh, make sure, um, I know if you're working, it's really hard and it's the same with me, I'm working. So um, we, we need to set ourselves, you know, a timetable, like you better be prepared when, um, children come with they every as we uh we all know you know every individual is different and they have their own ups and downs their own systems you know whatever is causing them to be what they are so we need to make sure that um i have taken for me i do i had i have done this i made sure i had you know at times when they would come home from school or sometimes their parents would drop they are children with my son or I pick them up for one reason or the other we used to take turns parents used to take turns um, of picking up children yeah usually uh, upset at school condition or their homework or somebody has said something to them so they come with that so I used to be prepared at home with my things you know I would be I would first of all I would eat and be ready and not have any of my things there uh, in between and then I would take care of them like first thing was are you hungry and they're not me most of the time they wouldn't be so hungry sometimes they would be tired and sometimes something would have made them upset so those were the three times that I've seen they were really not themselves or really <laughs> not in their best behaviors and they don't listen to us. You are so right. No matter, it's like talking to walls. They they don't just don't want to do it. So at that time, what I had used, and this is before I came into Brahma Kumaris, and then of course I used a few techniques from Brahma Kumaris too. Uh, but initially, I would just you know let them be who they are. Right? If they were if they were creating some destructive thing, of course I would stop it. But I would leave them alone for some time. And then when they would feel like, I would say, you know, are you ready? And my first three questions were usually, can you, you want me to talk to you for something? Or are you hungry? You know, and once there was no, 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 I would understand there was something wrong in the school. So my first thing is communicate with them in an in a very calm way, because they are going to throw tantrums and not listen and whatever. But I would ask these three questions, you know, Did somebody say something to you. Are you hungry? What's making you mad? Do you want to talk now or you want to eat something, you know, because usually when their stomach is full, they are okay and they start behave reasonably. Um, but that helped me after I came into Brahma Kumaris, you know, uh, because I was more calmer, uh, because I would practice, you know, all our techniques like uh, of course, you know, remembering that we have to be calm and quiet and uh, give them good wishes to, you know, each soul goes through a lot of things and their children um, and their different souls too. And they come with their own uh, sanskara. So 
we have to be really understanding um, because they have their own personality, they have their own trends. We have to be really understanding to that and um, then share, you know, um, the same questions. But for me, most of the time, it would be like, um, I observe that uh, if they came from school or they were uh, tired, it was different. Other times when they didn't want to listen, communication. You know, sometimes it's grown up children. As he grew up, there were times when I would take him out and speak to him. Communication, I think, is the key. And listen to the way they want to communicate, not how we want to communicate. It's like negotiating skill, even when we are outside, you know, with other people. It's good to listen. We need to develop that in us. And that's, again, our effort. So I hope I have answered. Uh, is that helpful? Yes, it is. Definitely. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. And if I want to enroll my kids uh, for the seven-day course, mm -hmm. is it coming up? Um, or... Should I just search online for the seven day meditation course? Yeah, you know what? Um, definitely contact our, our centers. And do you have our addresses? But we have Sister yes. Fern here who can tell you we have a retreat center and we have sure. our center in San Francisco. So you yes. can contact the sisters there and find out where are you located? Uh, we are in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, you know what? Um, definitely. Sorry, I forgot your name. Uh, what's your name? Mona. Mona. Mona, can uh, we? Uh, I'll try and complete the session. And sure. definitely, please feel free to put your email in the chat. And our sister Fern here, she will get in touch with you and uh, we'll give you the uh, address, uh, you know, information um, for the children's to complete. I don't know if you know of Avyakti Parivar and Avyakti Parivar has children's classes. So we'll give you details on that. But sure. thank you so sure. much. And I really appreciate all these questions. I love this interactive talk. I'm sorry if it has gone a little tangent to some people, but um, I I really uh, want to complete this. No worries. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah thank yeah, you. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, we'll take it uh, offline. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, we can, uh, I can contact the center later. Yeah, Thank you so yeah. Much. and I'll give you some time after the talk. We definitely have time. I'll just complete yeah. these two slides and then uh, we definitely have a lot of time to chat about it. Absolutely. So, yeah, okay, thanks. So if we move on to the next slide, um, after we have improved our self self-esteem, um, then we have to maintain it, right? Because now I know, how I have come out of it and uh, I want to maintain it now. So here comes a big, another big topic of self-respect. I know Brother Vinod mentioned it as soon as we started the um, session. So self-respect, and it can be defined in a very, another different way. You know, it's similar to self-esteem, but it's not the same, right? How do I, once I know who I am, then do I look at myself and keep that in my awareness all the time without having an ego? Because here again, another big word, you know, ego, am I in the, in the usual, uh, you know, outside in the world, am I using that that self-respect equivalent to uh, ego, you know, really big, big words. I don't want to go into all those um, definitions and details, but just to, because I start with small steps, I just want to say that if we want to maintain that self-esteem, how I have seen myself now, and I know what qualities I have, and I feel good about myself, if I have a value, then I know that I, I am that person. This is really me. So now I look at myself 
and I feel good about being who I am. So now I remain in that awareness. Now I know myself. And when I maintain myself in that place, 99% of the time, <laughs> I'm not saying 100, 99% of the time, I, I think I have maintained my self-respect because I know what I want, what is good for me, who I am, how I can work, and what's my comfortable space, and how the best I can give to me and to others. That's being in self-respect, not that ego, not having that uh, uh, you know, worldly uh, attaining power and chair and people respecting me and I feel good. No, it's you, you, how you feel. So that is, um, that's how I can put in the simplest words. I know this is a huge topic. We could have another talk of self-respect at another time, but um, it's easier and coming down now to spirituality. Um, we're here in our Brahma Kumaris. Uh, we believe that we are all souls. And we believe in one supreme soul. And, and you may follow this, you may not be following this, you may have your own faith, and that's fine. That's great. Whatever faith you follow, um, whatever makes you maintain your self esteem and to get to that the process that you may follow we follow meditation you may be following meditation another type of meditation meditation is nothing but talking to yourself right in in the same way baby steps uh, some negative thought comes I try to stop it and say no but I have this one it's like treating my own mind like my own child and talking to my own mind like a child saying oh no I'm good at this one you know let me focus on how good I am so going into myself again here I keep repeating the same sentence. I am a selfish being because I really want to do something good. I want to be good. I want to feel good. I want to create something good. I want to sleep. When I go off to sleep at the end of the day, I should feel good, right? So I'm doing everything for me. So in what way, whatever works for you. If you go to a gym and you're exercising and you really feel good, use that. That's your moment, that's your time with you, and you can use that. But keep doing it. Have a regular practice. In meditation here, we follow this regular practice. The reason is we are, we as uh, beings, have this tendency to go uh, into a place that may not always be, you know, uh, the right place because we are surrounded by so many different things and um, it's really hard to be stable and I get that. But with the regular practice, if we can make ourselves go there and do that regularly, practice makes us perfect. We needn't be perfect, perfect, quote unquote perfect, but something closer to what we like to be, right? And so if I really want to be that being that uh, makes myself happy, makes a good uh, example for others around me uh, in a good behavior, small steps again in a family, good behavior, um, then I have become that being to create that atmosphere around me like that. Now I am creating an environment in my family the way I want, the way others want, because they create themselves into different beings and a better and good environment for everyone. Slowly, steadily, it's moving on to a community and hopefully at least in our near areas and 
keep going, we can make a change, right? Hopefully. And it's not, it's not impossible. It is possible. It just takes a little longer. So I end here by again saying, you know, a regular practice. We follow meditation. And you could, you could be doing the similar thing, uh, but you may call it different. But I think we all talk to ourselves, we go within and we practice it. And this is one way of increasing our self-esteem. Uh, so we slowly, step by step, take ourselves from low esteem to a high, I wouldn't say high, uh, a better place, right? Um, and maintaining that self-esteem in a better place. So this is just a, my a discussion, my talk, um, in my opinion. <laughs> It, it, there's lots out there. There are professionals and certified people talking about it. But this is just a little chit chat in our own group. I just shared some of my examples, shared some of my thoughts, and I really appreciated everyone who also shared. Uh, so with that, I complete uh, this talk. And now I open up for questions and comments. And uh, uh, yeah, so thank you so much for allowing me to share. Thank you for this uh, simple yet very powerful uh, talk, presentation, because I thought that you were speaking your story, your experience, and that is very effective. You know, we can talk theoretically many things, but uh, experience is the biggest teacher not just for you, but for others, because we can learn by uh, looking at you. And so that is really great. Thank you. Um, and you answered, I had one question in between, but you answered that uh, uh, question about the, the self-inflated image, and you did touch base on that. So thank you for that. Uh, there is a comment here by Brother Gerald. He says that I found uh, reconnecting with the old friend, now a BK, helped me feel better. Better. So this is what you were suggesting that, you know, take baby steps, connect uh, uh, with the groups that make you feel better. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Great, very nice. So can uh, we open up, uh, if Sister Fern is there, Sister Fern, would you mind sharing um, the options available for Sister who would who is from Charlotte uh, on how she can connect with our centers here? Do you want to share that? Hi. Um... Our classes are usually 6.30 p.m., which is uh, 9.30 North Carolina. So what I can do, I can check out if we have a class location there that you can connect with. So if you email uh, to anabuti at brahmakumaris.org, I can reply with our nearest class location center. Or online if there isn't one close enough to you. So maybe give your city in North Carolina also. Right. So sister, you could send us your email, put it in the chat. Or if uh, Brother Vinod, could you put in the chat our, our information so she can get in touch with San Francisco Center? Is it possible? Could we share that in the chat? Thank you. So hope that is helpful to you, Mona. If um, yes, a uh, uh, great, great, yeah. Yes, and it feel free. Uh, actually, to... I am in. Uh huh. I am um here in Charlotte. There is a center, and I am associated with this that center as well. Oh, good, good. Yeah. 
yeah but feel free to join us you know and and sure. these days everything is open <laughs> you know this right. wonderful thing due to pandemic i know lots of uh, bad things have happened but there's something good that came out of it is you know now we are a global community so it's wonderful Correct. so yeah now and then i get connected with the uh, local charlotte center as well and i always uh, when i like uh, you know, when I see some emails um, from Manubuti, uh, mm -hmm. some interesting topics, I would join the live session as well. And, uh, right. and also from India, there are some live sessions from Brahma Kumari from South India, Chennai, Tamil mm -hmm. version as well. Uh -huh. So I know when I join that as well. So, you know, I kind of get in uh, touch with all these centers. That's great. Thank you. That's yeah, and you know what? I don't know if you know about Abhyakti Parivar. Uh -huh. uh, that is also, I think they have children's classes. Children yes. and youth classes. Yeah. Uh -huh. But the, when you email and talk with uh, Sister Fern, uh, you uh -huh. know, we can communicate and let you know. So they do have children and uh, youth classes. And I think they sure. do it online. Yes. Yeah. I will explore it a little bit more. Yeah, sure. Thank sure. you so much. Sure. Thank you so much, sister. You're welcome. That so was nice. a great Thank invitation. You. <laughs> Om All Shanti. Right. Om Shanti. So with that, if I have, uh, if there is anybody else who wants to share uh, or have comments, we can welcome. You know, uh, we would be happy to hear from you, and we welcome any comments, questions. If not, then uh, let's all um, meditate. So sit in your comfortable position. I I now know who am I? I am a sparkling tiny star. I, this energy, light energy, is capable of connecting with things around me. Through my thoughts, vibrations, I, the being of light, when connected with the ever shining, ever bright. Supreme Light. And see myself clearly.
I am a loving being. I am kind peaceful being I am light And I remain connected to the supreme light. The stronger my connection, the brighter I am. The more I connect the more I fill myself with love peace happiness I am light. And I belong to the supreme light. I remain connected. And I fill myself with peace, power, The more I feel myself, I share the peace, love, kindness, and the light. around me. The lighter I feel, I am light. And I'm connected to the supreme light. As I come back to this awareness, I maintain the connection and share the space and happiness. all around me and beyond me. Om Shanti 
Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.